Hi, Indeed. My name is Yves. I was once well recognized by the fact that I was wearing shirts with large flowers in bright colors. Now I wear shirts with small flowers in not so bright colors, so maybe that's a better version of myself. <laughs> but I still have orange socks on my feet, so <laughs> that helps. So once I was like this guy. I was a, a researcher at the university, which is not a bad thing. I was uh, investigating the local corrosion of pure copper alloys in sodium chloride containing environments. That's very interesting, isn't it? <laughs> Apparently it's interesting to find out how nuclear waste is stored for many, many years. And an option for me, while being a researcher, would be to turn into this guy, so remaining a researcher, investigating interesting things in a more incremental way, improving stuff, understanding stuff better. So my, my beard is turning gray, but I'm not in the lab anymore, because while doing my PhD, I actually spent a bit more time doing other stuff, because in the lab I was working, it's an engineering lab, and there was a lot of questions coming from industrial parties, uh, companies coming in, with a, a pipe that started leaking. Um, there was the, the light poles a few years ago, the, the, the highway, the E19, light poles that fell over. Um, heat exchangers that stopped functioning and then the companies came to the department and they asked, why is this happening? What's happening? What's going on? And I actually spent more time investigating what happened there each time than investigating my real research topic. And then what I discovered at that moment was that a lot of things keep on going wrong in industry. Um, and I also saw by explaining what happened, oh, a lot of those things could be avoided. But, but looking back at my, my daily research, I didn't see the way at which I could, by doing what I do, did every day back then, change that. How could I influence that? I was making incremental progress and then changing and improving things, but, but not really uh, modifying the way society worked, the way industry worked. So I, I decided, no, I, I want to take things into my own hands. I want to really change stuff, make big waves. Um, so how to make big waves? You can, you can't turn yourself into a whale. <laughs> um, and then there was a little voice in the back of my head that said, yeah, maybe you should start a company. <laughs> So I started reflecting on that. It was back in 2008, 2009, to be really active in the industrial tissue, in the industrial environment. So I started looking into that. Okay, I had some technology developed at the university, and I clearly had a problem state, because things go wrong, things cost money. You have spills, you have factories that stopped operating because of crashes, because of breaking of, of a parts of the factory, so that there was a problem, there was a technology. Wow, that's perfect, isn't it? Um, let's start a company. Couldn't be that hard, just easy to um, you have technology, you set up a company, you sit in your office, you make some advertisements, this is my solution and companies will come to you and buy. No? <laughs> Damn, was I wrong. <laughs> the geeky side of me, a graph. <laughs> What you see here is the number of spin-off companies created in the university I'm from uh, over the years. And actually, the moment I started was having the idea was 2008, 2009. And you see there, one or two spin-off companies were started. So back in the day, the whole startup concept wasn't that sexy. It wasn't that boosted as it is today. Also, OK, I said, start a company, we bring technology, and then I started to talk to other people. But actually, I couldn't find any experience or additional knowledge in my direct, um, the people I had in my direct uh, surrounding. So no family members that really had the experience of starting up a company. You have talked a lot to, to professors, but they actually were, yeah, very skilled, but, but not in the, in the company kind of world. So I was a bit in the, in the desert, so to say. But still I was convinced, okay, starting a company sounds very cool. Let's do it. This will be my life. I start a company, I'll be the guy with the cell phone calling all day, doing deals, you know, <laughs> revenue, cool. <laughs> but then I did start, and this was reality. <laughs> so indeed you hit the road, <laughs> and things go wrong sometimes, and 
that what got me started. Like, okay, it's maybe it's not that easy as we figured out. So the next thing I did was maybe I should consult some experts because yeah, one credo I try to keep in mind is you shouldn't repeat the mistakes that other people already did before you. So uh, let's talk to people. So I started consulting experts in various ways. Um, and what do they say? You should write a business plan. Yeah. And then there's other experts that you pay. And for an amount of money, they extend your business plan from 80 pages to 100 pages. Great. You have to protect your technology, get a patent. Yeah, you have to improve your technology. So, yeah, the best way to start, what's the company structure? Will it be a limited company or another company? So they were all talking about structural parts, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. And, and over, I listened to them, I, I, I heard what they said, and I tried to implement it over a year. And actually what I, what I noticed is that those advices actually didn't progress, they didn't make us progress. They were very interesting, the advices from the experts, but they didn't really help. I should have thrown them in there. Why? Because a lot of those experts were coming from large, well-established companies. And large established companies, it's like a, a big oil tanker. It's going by itself. And it takes a lot of force and a lot of patience to change a trajectory. We even know a larger company, such as a, a government, maybe the Belgian, it can function for many days without any government. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, yeah, do those people really know what it takes to, to start up something, to get something started? Because it's a different playing field. And, and as it turned out, indeed, they, they don't actually in general. Because a, a life of a startup is something totally different compared to the life of a big corporate. Because indeed it's not like I have a great technology and what you would think is okay, you see the big companies scouting and they see interesting technology there, they're not coming to you and saying you have great technology, come here, I will apply it here and all my problems are solved. No, actually you as a company, you have to learn yourself where you can bring that value. And then people talking indeed about the innovation awards and then innovation, other people think about, yeah, it's technical stuff. The hell it isn't. Every technical ID has been repeated for you 10 to 20 times. There's more IDs than there are people on this planet. The real game changer, the real difference in innovation is making the IDs happen. It is not only about the technical thing that you discover. It's also about how should I use this? How should I sell this? What's the story behind it? What is the value? How can someone apply it in his or her specific situation? Everybody is, is used to the world directly around it. And, and, and you, if you bring a new, a new solution, a new product to the market, you really need to be able to fit, to make it fit to the specific problem of your client. So that was a, one of the other issues. Um, the, 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 the business we are in is we are selling stuff to companies. But if you talk to an expert or you read an economics book, 99% of what's in there is about selling, the, opening up the next type of coffee bar, uh, bringing a new candy to the market, a new social network. So a lot of the information that you get is about what is called in the, in the lingo business to consumer, which is actually quite simple as a market. It's small budgets. People can decide, OK, today I will, Coca, will drink Coca-Cola, tomorrow I'll drink Pepsi. And maybe the day after, I'll try some Dr. Pepper. So that's small and easy decisions to take. And you can easily experiment on that. But, but the business we were in, that was the corporate business, which means, OK, today I have to decide on a few hundred thousand euros. And there's 10 people looking at me from the back and saying, is this guy taking the right decision? So corporate business is totally different from consumer business. It takes a lot longer before people can even decide. And then they start hesitating again. And the budgets are a lot bigger. So it's not that easy. So what you need to do <coughs> is get on the road. Actually, you have your great ID. And surprise, surprise, you should actually, if, if you plan starting up a company, you should really, the first day you have that plan, write down on a piece of paper, <coughs> what is the product I will sell and to who I will sell it. Put it in a vault. And after three years, open that vault. And you'll start laughing. 
because it will never resemble. <laughs> and that's, that's a good thing as well, because that's what's going to make you stand out. It's, on the, it's your starting ID, and the thing you should do next is just get on the road and start testing your ID. Start experimenting. Go to potential customers, explain them what you want to bring them, how it will bring value to them, et cetera, et cetera. Get in a dialogue, and actually you will learn a lot from them. Some people will ignore you and say it's not relevant. Others will help you. And as such, you will be able to shape your product. And, and as I said before, it's not only a technical shaping. It's a way of bringing it. Will you bring it and you sell a box and it's to them? Or do they want the box and also a manual? Or do they want a box and you standing next to it and telling them how to use the box? It may sound a bit funny, but that's, that's the way you have to figure out, OK, well, the, the, the thing I've discovered here, how should it be brought to the market? And the only thing you can discover that is by getting on the road and, and talking to people way before you start studying market sizes and time to markets and value chains, et cetera, et cetera. You need to be really feeling, OK, how, what, how I explain this when it's really triggering an interest, when are people really listening to me and saying, this is what I need? Because that's the point you need to obtain. You need to find in the lingo the product market fit. And that shouldn't be expensive, because I showed you the slide of the experts, and I talked a bit about the experts. We have a lot of experts around. All, many of them are corporate guys that know very well how the corporate world is working. But actually, when you're going around, talking to customers, talking to other entrepreneurs, you will actually find that the best advice is the advice you get for free. That's one lesson I would like you to take home. Uh, Build relationships, talk to people, uh, get to know how companies work, get to know how a certain industry works, and you will get a lot of advice just for free because people are happy sharing their findings with you. When people start charging money for, like, for expanding your business plan, it's just lost money. Don't do it. Um, and then, yeah, going back to the topic of today, what's, yeah, what's a better version of yourself? I don't, I don't believe in the concept of, of a better version. What I believe in more is a concept of a more adapted version of myself. Because I said, yeah, you have to go out and experiment. And actually, yeah, maybe that was what I was doing as well when being a researcher. It's the same thing. You have to experiment and look at the result of your experiment. Tell your story from A to B, and to the next customer, you, still, you tell your story from B to A. And you see how they react. OK, it's getting more attention when I tell it this way. Actually, it's the same thing. You're not changing that much. You're, you're just using the same experimenting tools in a different context. And also, you need to be able to dream big. As a little guy here, so he's aspiring to grow up and become something else. And actually, that's what you should do. You have to try. Because there's a lot of people that have a great idea, a lot of them in universities and other research institutes, and they find it the best idea ever. And then they spend five years thinking how or somebody should use this ID. Because it's fantastic, isn't it? It will change the world. It will never change the world if you leave it in your head and don't use it. So my message would be, if you have such a great ID, get out of your building and try. Try to get it sold. Try to make it happen. Because only then you will make the world a better place. You will realize something. And you'll be looking back to a part of your life and be happy that at least you tried achieving something. With this, I'd like to thank you. <laughs>